Hello again, Odoers. Today I want to give you the 411 on landed cost. You see, when we purchase a product from a vendor, there are certain expenses that we have to consider in addition to the cost of the actual product itself. This includes the price of shipping, taxes, and more. These are referred to as landed costs, and it's important to keep track of them because they help us evaluate how much of a profit we made by selling the product or if we made a profit at all. For example, if the price we paid for the product plus the price of the landed cost were to exceed the amount we make from selling it, we would actually be losing money. Luckily, Odoo allows us to keep track of the landed cost to make it easy for us to understand the total overhead for each product we sell. So let's hop into our database now and see how this all works. All right, before diving into the workflow, let me highlight a few settings you'll need to enable to make landed cost available in Odoo. First, let's head to the inventory application click on configuration and then settings at the top of the screen. Then we're gonna to need to scroll down all the way to valuation and we're gonna make sure that landed cost feature is enabled. Next, we're gonna go ahead and click on configuration again, select product categories and then select all. From the category setting page, we wanna make sure that average cost here is selected. This method will value products based on the average cost of each product unit, including any landed costs associated with them. If we open the average cost or costing methods drop down section here, you'll see that there are other options such as standard price, which uses the price listed in the cost field on the product form, and first in, first out, which uses the price of the product unit that entered the inventory first. Next, we wanna make sure that the inventory valuation is set to automated. This makes it so the inventory is automatically valued every time a product enters or leaves our warehouse. If we open inventory valuation here, in the dropdown, we can also go ahead and choose manual, which would mean that we would need to manually create according entries to value our inventory. Unless there's a reason you need to do that, it's much easier to leave this field set as automated. Now, I should also mention that the inventory valuation field only appears if you have the accounting app installed and you have the automatic accounting feature enabled in the app settings. If you don't, inventory valuation will default to the automated setting. All right, now let's make sure we're done with our settings here and they're all configured properly. So let's go ahead and take a look at the product that I've configured to represent a landed cost. This product will be added to vendor bills before we pay them to make sure that we're paying our vendors everything we owe them so we'll have a record of all of our expenses. For that, I'll go ahead and click on products and then products once again. And here we're going to move the products filter here in the search bar and just search import tax. Then we'll go ahead and select the import tax here. And this specific landed cost represents any tax we have to pay when importing a product from another country. First off, you'll notice that the product type here is set to service. This is because the import tax isn't an actual product that we store in our warehouse, but more of a privilege that we pay for. In this case, it's the right to import the product. Only service products can be used to represent landed costs, which we'll see in a moment. I've also left the landed cost field set to $0 here. This allows me to change the amount of the tax based on how much it costs for each order we use it for. I've also left the product category here set to all. This means the average cost method will be used for this product since that's the way we set the costing method as on the category settings page. Now let's go ahead and click on the purchase tab. And this is where you can go ahead and see we have the landed cost checkbox enabled. This makes it so I can allocate the price of a landed cost to receipt after the landed cost has been added to a vendor bill. This checkbox only appears if the product type is a service. And there you go. This is the product that's now fully configured to be used as a landed cost. Now let's purchase some products from a foreign company, which will require us to pay in import tax. For that, I'll first head over to the purchase application and we're gonna go ahead and create a new RFQ or quotation by selecting new. In this use case, we're gonna go ahead and select our vendor wood hut. And for the product, we're gonna use our desk organizer. And we're also gonna go ahead and change the quantity here to three. And then we'll go ahead and confirm this order. For each desk organizer we import, we're required to pay a $5 import tax but we won't worry about that later until the uh, end of the video. Next, I'll click receive products at the top of the page and open the receipt for the desk organizers and just go ahead and click validate to receive them into our inventory. I'll want to remember this receipt number because we'll need to know it later in the workflow. 
All right, before we move on, I just want to show you the valuation of the desk organizers before we add the price of the land cost. To do so, we're going to go back to the inventory application. And at the top, we're going to select reporting and then valuation. On this page, we're just going to look for the desk organizer line, which is right here. And in the moved quantities section, we can see the quantity is labeled as three, which is the number of desk organizers we received into the inventory. In the total value column, we see $75 is the amount, which is the price we paid to Wood Hut for the three organizers since they cost $25 each. Very cool, but as you've probably already noticed, this value doesn't take into account for the price of our landed cost. To make sure those costs are accounted for, we're gonna head back to our purchase order by navigating to the purchase application and then selecting our most recent PO. Then we're gonna go ahead and create a bill for this order. And then after selecting today's date in the bill field, I'm gonna go ahead and add the import tax on the invoice line and change the price to $15. Since I purchased three organizers and I have to pay a $5 tax for each of them. Once that's added, I'll go ahead and click confirm here and then select the create landed cost button once that appears above the confirmed bill. On the resulting landed cost page form, I first need to select the receipt that was processed earlier in the transfers field. To do that, I'll click on the transfers drop down menu here and then search more. And then we're gonna go ahead and search our last PO, which is 00223. Select that transfer from Wood Hut, and then we're gonna open the additional cost tab here and make sure we've selected the right option in the split method column. So let's open the split method column here. In the dropdown, we'll go ahead and see a few other options. First, we see equal. Equal splits the cost equally across each product included in the receipt, regardless of the quantity of each. So if you have an order of three desks and two chairs, for the landed cost of $10, $5 will be assigned to the desks and $5 will be assigned to the chairs. By quantity splits, the cost across each unit of all products in the receipt. So using our last example, $6 of the landed cost will be assigned to the desks, $2 for each desk, and $4 will be assigned to the chairs, $2 for each chair. By current cost, splits the cost accordingly to cost of each product unit. So a product with a higher cost receives a greater share of the landed cost. By weight and by volume work the same way, except for that they split the cost accordingly to weight or volume instead of cost. We've only got one product for this particular receipt, so we're gonna just go ahead and leave it at equal and click away from the drop down menu. Then I'll go ahead and click validate here in the top left corner to register the land cost for our desk organizers. All right, with that done, let's go ahead and check the inventory valuation we looked at earlier to see how it has changed. So for that, let's go back to the inventory application, followed by reporting and valuation once again. And then we need to find our desk organizer, which we have right here. On the desk organizers line, we can see that the move quantity column remains at three. However, the number of total value column has increased to 90, an increase of $15. If we click on the line, we can see the details of how this value is being calculated. On the bottom line, we see three units of the product with a value of 75. These are the actual products along with our associated cost of $25 each. The line above displays the moved quantities here along with the value of $15. This represents the import tax, the, the landed cost of 15, which displayed a quantity of zero since it's not a product itself, but rather a service-based product. And just like that, the total value of our desk organizers has been updated to include both the cost of the units we have, as well as the landed cost assigned to them. And that's all today for today, folks. You now know how to create a service product that will act as a landed cost and how to assign landed costs to items received into the inventory. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.